Hey guys, just Julian here, and um, yeah, I said I'll do a tutorial if I got 80 likes on that other video, and um, I got like 90. That was pretty cool. <laughs> so um, yeah, here's a tutorial. Uh, it took me a while to figure out exactly what I want to like <laughs> do in this tutorial, but um, I figured out everybody seemed to really like that era speed up and the pipes and all that sort of good stuff. So I thought I would teach you a few techniques I used in that, like the breaking of the text, how I put the holes in it. I'll tell you how to um, make sort of cracks and like bumps and cracks like going into the text. Maybe a few pipes or something, just like an overall kind of cool text effect you can use. So um, I'm in Cinema 4D R14 here. Um, I just use R14 just because it's better and new. <laughs> so. I always set my width and height to 1920 by 1080 um, and bean occlusion on and go to save and turn up channel on. That's just what I do every time. So um, I'm just going to put in some Motex now. Uh, doesn't really matter what it says, what font. I'm just going to say, I'll just keep it as text, I guess. Um, a good font is usually like a thick bulky type square font um, it's just simply easier and it, it just looks better overall too um, I make the depth uh, like a bit more basically so it's square so if you look at the bottom make sure it's it's square so that makes sense um, and then once you have your text and now just put on uh, caps so I just want to go to the little caps tab and we want to go to fill it and fill it I'm not fill it cap, just fill it now. So I uh, turn down the radius a bit. There's nothing worse than a really big fill it. <laughs> so that looks pretty good. Um, there's lots of ways of doing this. This is just the way I do it. I don't know. It just seems to um, look better. Um, and you can, with this constraint thing, you don't have to click that. I'll just keep like that. Um, you can also change the fillet type there's a, a lot of different ones if you do engraved it um it just it looks it it looks better basically if you do engraved it usually just looks better um because if you do the other types of fillets it just makes like a little line like a little flat plane come out of the edge but as you can see here it's an actual um sort of cube like going around the edge so it just looks better um, so what you, I do now is I'll go to my frontal view, so I can just see this text here. You can ever either press in the middle scroll button, or just click on the little view, um, little window tab up here. So I just center that, make it nice and big, so I can see it all. And I got up, go up here to that yellow squiggly line, and go to the linear pen tool. Um, so here I basically draw in all the segments that. I want to keep that will actually be the text. So um, let's say here I just want a small cut out the middle. So I'm going to draw a line keeping in between the fillet. That's the key. You've got to keep in between that fillet. And then it's going to draw that. And then make sure to make it sort of um, line up. And then I might join it another one up here. And then I'll basically just trace the outline of the text keeping inside that rectangle the whole way around and then so right now I just have two shapes that I've drawn or splines you can see them inside there and if I was to select both of these holding shift or control right click and connect objects and delete which basically connects the two splines to make them one single spline um, and then I will go to my extrude nerves tab uh, drag, whoops, drag the spline into the extrude nerve, so it has the down arrow, and then it will fill up that shape and make it a 3D object. Um, and then I just want to increase the depth of that a little bit. Not too much. Uh, I'll just drag it, keep it so it's um, level with the text, like that. Um, now, one thing I do is just copy and paste this original mode text, Control C, Control V, and with the caps, turn the fillet just to cap on um, on both of the ends, 
and then you want to just turn down the depth a bit and then make sure that's on the back if you want to line it up perfectly you can go to this 2D view here and turn down the depth about like a third of it in you, d you just want a little bit of an indent um, like that so the cracks like here actually like show up so as you can see here yeah I've got my two cracks looking pretty pretty good on my two uh, cubes whatever um, and there's lots of different techniques and ways of doing this so if I want to go to my E go back to my 2D view I'll just zoom in a bit closer for this one you can do a really cool sort of cracked effect so if I just want to draw out the bond is E here I can zoom in and I could get this jagged sort of line going which could look like a rock or rubble or something sort of chipping away and just join that back up and I could make another one here and I could sort of follow this crack and maybe just close it up there and I could even keep the crack going to over this side too that up and I'll just do one more crack just here um, so I'm just trying to make it whoops I don't think that crack turned out very well um, yeah that looks good enough I guess <laughs> and then just follow again the outline of the fillet like we do with the other ones and boom we're done so um, exactly like the other one I did uh, select all the splines um, you can click on one the bottom one and then click on the top and hold shift and it'll select all the ones in between and then just right click connect objects and delete and then go to extrude nerves and then drag the spline into it and as you can see we have sort of this cracked effect um, and if you want to go that extra step to make it just look a little bit more detailed you can go to caps and you can add in a fillet cap turn it down Oops. Um, okay. so and it just adds uh, I think the, be the best thing to do is just increase these cuts a little bit Oops. just so it doesn't have like overlay but you can make sort of this bevel coming out of the text and then you have these cracks with the little bevel in them and it just it looks really cool it's a really cool effect a lot of people don't know how to do it either and um, and if you wanted your text if you didn't want this on the front like if you wanted this bevel around the edge to go um, further out sort of going around the edge you could all you have to do is just increase the depth of the text and just drag it forward a bit and um, oops wrong one the bevel one the bevel one <laughs> and just drag it forward a bit and then you have sort of that cap around the edge which can look pretty cool um, obviously there's a lot of different techniques you can do with this there's not just the cracks if you go to your cubic and um, the, there's a lot of different sort of pen tool um, techniques you can use to do a lot of different effects um, so yeah that's basically it um, if I'll just quickly do a texture on it so um, if you are looking for some nice textures and stuff, I don't use some for my pack. Um, you can purchase my pack, and I have a lot of good materials and stuff, so you can just message me on Skype or on YouTube. Um, and yeah, you can purchase that. <laughs> so I'll just get this brick texture, and I might get like a nice metal texture just to sort of um, cap it off, I guess. So I always turn off specular uh, for every texture I use. It just it makes it white and just yuck. Um, and then I'll put it on cubic, and I might turn down the length to 25 and the length 25 for that. And I'll do the same to this. I'll just paste in 25 and the original. I'll do to that too. 
Whoops, I did the wrong texture. I make sure you remember to put the cubic too. This cubic sort of wraps the texture around um, the object. So each face is sort of facing outwards, if that makes sense. It just it just wraps it around well. I, I don't know how to explain it any further. But when you're working with any sort of texture, you got to set it to cubic. So as you can see there, I have a cool sort of indented cracked effect. And if you want to add extra sort of style or um, effect to it, you could get some sort of lava texture, or some uh, you could even make your own texture and um, have like a glowing texture. So I'll just drag in this lava texture I have here. And just pop that on that back extrude, the one behind the cracks and things, and let's say you could put put on a little glow, so glow. Um, I'll just keep it the default setting, I guess. And I'll turn down the length just a bit. Let's, let's say 50. And then when I render that out, I don't have a Lightroom on. <laughs> so I just quickly put a Lightroom just so you can actually see what I'm doing. I'll go to that text. Let's rotate that one a bit. So when I want to have a light room on, light room on with uh, everything. You can see, you can see this texture behind the cracks. You can't; it's a bit hard to see it here, mainly because the glow isn't that strong. Um, I could make glow like a nice little red. I'll be able to see it a bit better. Um, so you can see the texture in there, and it looks really, really cool. It's like a really cool effect. So. That's basically it for that tutorial. Um, it's just how to do some nice text effects and cracks. Um, you can use this technique or it's a bright glow. <laughs> but as you can see, the glow comes through the cracks. Obviously, if you're doing this yourself, you do a better job. <laughs> but um, that's basically it, guys. It's a pretty simple tutorial. Uh, if you liked it, if you like this tutorial and you want me to keep doing them, just give. Give it a like and a comment because I'd really like to know your opinions because I haven't been making a lot of tutorials because I didn't really think um, my viewers wanted to watch tutorials. But um, if you do, just give me a like and gets a lot of likes or a lot of positive feedback. I'll be sure to um, make at least a tutorial a week and get a little series going. So um, yeah, thanks for watching guys and have a nice day.